The Zack Files Slap I'm a Mind Reader by Dan Greenberg. Chapter 5. When I got home, I decided to tell my dad what had happened. We've always been pretty close, but we've become even closer since my flock split up and dad got his own apartment. I can tell my dad anything at all, and he always understands. I don't understand. Said my dad, you say you think you can read people's minds? Now that I said, I don't think I can, I know I can. I'm sorry, Zach, he said, but that doesn't seem possible. Oh, it's possible, all right, I said. Okay then, what am I thinking right now, right this very minute? Here is what you're thinking, I said. Maybe the this. Divorce is finally getting to me. Maybe you ought to send me to the child pastologist. His mouth dropped open. How did you know what? That's what I was thinking. He whispered. Dad, I already told you. I said I read minds. It happened since science class. Science class. I got an electric shock. Okay, what am I thinking of? You're hoping the pastologist is free next Monday. I said that, trust me, this has nothing to do with the divorce. He sighed and shook his head. This is amazing, he said, totally amazing. Okay, what number am I thinking of? 87, I said. Dad, I need your advice about something I heard in school. Somebody is putting a murder. He looked at me very seriously and narrowed his eyes. What animal am I thinking of? He asked. A duck filled plate puff, I said impatiently. That did then you hear what I said? Somebody in school is plotting a murder. I'm sorry, Zach, he said. It's just pretty incredible to find out your son is a mind reader. But you nailed an Everything I was thinking, including the 87 and the dark blue plotted puff. Now, what's all this about somebody plotting a murder? I pick up somebody's thoughts. They said they were going to kill someone tomorrow. I can believe it could be one of the kids in my class. Maybe it's the Jane, Jane Torp. He's very weird. Anytime he hangs around his office in the basement, he yells at us. What he said, if we didn't stop bothering him, he'd kill us. Oh, that's just an expression, said my dad. People say that kind of thing all the time. It doesn't mean they are killers. That had a point. But if it wasn't Mr. Hawkmister, who was it? Mrs. Coleman, Coleman Levin? That you've met Mrs. Coleman Levin. Did she strike you as the murdering type? Of course not. You're really being silly, Zach, Dad said with a wave of his hand. Then he forced his eyes on me. Okay, now, what famous singer am I thinking of? If you can do this with this every time, I could get you on the Tonight Show. I tuned that up. It was clear he wasn't talking, he wasn't taking this seriously. But then he did. He hadn't heard the scary voice saying, kill, kill. Somebody, somebody's life was in danger, and I was going to have to solve this mystery on my own. So far, I have two main subjects, Mr. Hogminster and Mrs. Coleman Levin. And in case you're wondering which famous singer that I was thinking of, it was Barry Manilow. Gross. Chapter 6. I came to the school wearing earmuffs ne the next day. I looked stupid in them, but I found it helped block out other people's thoughts. Here's the thing about mind reading. Most of the stuff you learn, you wish you hadn't. Like Mrs. Toradash, the old lady who lives next door to us. I learned she would like to have a date with my dad. I found that out this morning in the elevator. 
and that I found out he hasn't been to the dentist in about two years. He makes me go every six months. It is fair. I got to school half an hour early. That was so I could move around a little. It was scary having to track a killer by myself, but what else could I do? I couldn't go to the police. I mean, what would I tell them? That I read the mind of somebody who was planning a murder? Somehow, I didn't think they'd be too impressed with that. I took off my earmuffs, went down to the basement, and hang around the janitor's office. Mr. Hogsmeade was my number one suspect. That was mainly because I didn't want it to be Mrs. Common Lever. She may be weird, but I like her. I could hear the sounds of heavy rain and thunder outside. A big storm was on its way. I heard that on the morning news. It made the basement seem even scarier. But I didn't let that stop me. I had to find out who the killer was before he killed. I pretended to be packing a litter in the hallway, but I was hoping to pick up evil thoughts from Mr. Hawksmeter. For several minutes, Mr. Hawksmeter didn't have a single interesting thought. My nose itches, I heard. I scratch it. That, mmm, that feels good. Scratching is good, especially if you itch. Not as good if you don't. A second later, I heard outlet. Go to put in a new outlet. That kid Zack shorted out the old one. Dumb. So, Mr. Hoxmina thought I was dumb. Did he? Well, I didn't see him here. Exactly a genius. The question though was whether he was a killer. I heard more thunder noises. What was Mr. Hoxmeter doing in there? I wish I could see. There was no keyhole in the door, but there was a little space between the door and the floor. I laid down and tried to peer under the door. At first, I didn't see anything at all. Then I saw a huge pair of feet. Then the feet started walking toward the door. Oh no, I had to get up first. The door swung open. I scrambled my feet, but I tripled and fell flat on my face. Mr. Hawksmeter stood over me like a giant. Thunder rumbled closer. What the heck are you doing? He said in this really angry voice. Oh, hi there, Mr. Hawksmeter, I said. I got up and slapped the dust off my shirt and pants. I said, what were you doing down there on the floor in front of my office? He demanded. Uh, push up, sir. I said, what? I was doing push-ups. I always do push-ups before class to sort of wake myself up. Mr. Hogsmeade fasted his eyes, scary eyes on me. Then he leaned way down and pushed his face up close to mine. I see he must have eaten a garlic donut for breakfast. P.U. I was scared he was going to take a hammer and knock me over the head. But instead, he did something else. He started laughing. I had never seen Mr. Hawksmeter laugh before. It was not a pretty sight. Then I tuned in on his thoughts. Push-ups, give me a break. Does he really expect me to believe that? He turned and walked down the hallway, shaking the head. These kids, they kill me. He laughed a weird laugh again. I watched Mr. Hogsmeade go. I was very puzzled. His thoughts didn't exactly sound like the thoughts of murder. Mr. Hogsmeade was a weird guy, all right, but I was starting to think that maybe I should cross him off my list of subjects. Only if I did that, then my number one subject was Mrs. Conan Levin. Chapter 7 Also, my classroom, rain was filling itself against the windows. Lightning flash, thunder crashed. Mrs. Coleman Levin was taking attendance. Then, and then, from somewhere, I heard a strange voice. Kill, kill, kill the day! Mrs. Coleman Levin was finished with attendance. Now she was standing up and walking over to my desk. 
She was looking right at me. I heard kill this one when the time is right. How creep the taste of blood. Yikes! Zach said Mrs. Common Lemon, could you eat lunch quickly today? Then I want to, I want you to come right back up here to the classroom. There was a strange expression on her face. Uh, what for? I stuttered. I need to talk to you. Alone, you mean? I said. Only it came out more like a squeak. Of course alone, she said. I have a surprise for you. I saw the heart. I had a feeling I knew what the surprise was. Mrs. Common Lemon was a physical killer and I was her next victim. Some surprise. I had to get out of this, but how? Between math and geographic classes, I tried to phone that. I wanted him to come and take me home. But then I called him, his answering machine came up, which is weird. My dad is always home. He's a writer, and that's where he works. But today, of all this, he was out. I left him a message. Come and get me at school, I said right away. Then I went to Mrs. Crump's office. I told her I felt sick. If I stayed in her office, I'd be safe. But she stood took my temperature and said there was nothing wrong with me. She sent me back up to English class. At lunch, I sat at Spencer Sharp's table, and I heard him talking. He'd invite me to his birthday party next month at Action Land Amusement Park. That would have been nice. Too bad I might not be alive to enjoy it. Mrs. Common Levin had told me to eat quickly. I was too scared to eat at all. The storm was really bad now. It was only 12.30, but it seemed as dark as night, and my dad hadn't shown up yet. I was afraid to go upstairs to my classroom, but I had a plan. If Mrs. Common Lemon put anything funny, I would scream and run for my life. Okay, so this was a great plan. plan. It was just the best one I could think of under pressure. But then I got out of the room. Mrs. Common Lemon wasn't even there. It was creepy being all alone in the classroom. In the corner, the skeleton seemed to be grinning at me. <clears throat> Maybe once he'd been a student of Mrs. Common Lemon's too. I sat down at my desk to wait. There was a sudden clap of thunder. I was so it was so loud, I actually jumped a couple of inches into the air. Right after that, all the lights went out. Lighting must have knocked out the power. I was pretty freaked out, alone in the dark room. Carefully, I got up from my desk. From the flashes of lighting, I could almost see... <clears throat> I could almost see well enough to get to the door. When I was about halfway there, I got the really creepy feeling. The feeling that I wasn't alone in the room. And right after that, I picked up and saw a sub. It said, there he is, now I have him. The time to kill is now. I screamed and pushed, re rushed, rushed toward the door. Oh, sorry, chapter 8. I screamed and rushed toward the door. Unfortunately, I tripped over a desk in the dark and came down hard on the floor. Pain shot through my knees. Kill him! Kill him now! Where the sound I heard in my ears. Thunder exploded again outside. I started crying that. I have to admit it. I couldn't help. You would have to if you were me. If you don't think so, you're kidding yourself. And just then the lights freaked out. I blink in the air. I look around. No one was there. Not a soul. So whose thoughts had I heard? I couldn't figure it out. Maybe it just I just imagined them. But just then, just when I was beginning to think I was crazy, I heard them again. He's trapped, ready for the kill. So he now. What? Wait a minute. So he. What kind of killer could swallow a 70 pound kid? Out of the corner of my eye, I caught a quick motion. I turned and looked. Nothing. Just some fish in the one of the sinks. And then I looked again. No. 
not just some fish, the piranha. The piranha was about to swallow a little fish. Mrs. Clover must have put in the piranha's tank at lunchtime. It was the piranha sauce it, I've been receiving all along. I sprang to the piranha tank. The piranha had trapped the little fish in the corner. With its jaws wide open, it was about to gulp him down. I slapped the tank. Both fish jumped. I looked wildly around for a fish net. Ah, there was one. I stuck it into the piranha tank and gently scooped up the little fish. Then I carried him to the fish tank and plopped him to, into it. The water splashed at my head. From somewhere I heard the teeniest voice I've ever heard. It said, a miracle, a miracle. Somebody say, saved by the hand of God. On the floor near the piranha tank was a loose electric cord. I ran the flitter motor in the aquarium. It must have yanked free when I slapped the tank to distract the piranha. I bent down and plugged it back in. I forgot my hands was wet. There was a blue flash. My hand tingled all the way on my arm. Fair cracks went off in my eyes, and then I blacked out. Chapter 9 When I woke up, I was back on the cot of the nurse's office. Mrs. Corb and Mrs. Common Lever were staring down at me. So was that. Oh, hi, I said. I found you on the floor of the classroom, said Mrs. Common Lever. How are you feeling? Fine, thanks, I said. No, this time I tell the truth. Actually, no, not so hot, I said. You gave us quite a scare. There was a and my dad. I'm sorry, I said. Pretty dumb of me to electron myself twice, huh? I'm glad you're okay, said Mrs. Common Lever. I managed a smile. I was glad my homeroom teacher wasn't a TSCO killer after all. I sat up. So what did you want to see me for? I asked. What was the surprise? Of that, she said, I decided to let the students take care of our tarantula over the vacation. I put some I put everyone's name in the, a hat. And guess what? You won! Uh, great, I guess, I said. So that was a big surprise. Getting to take care of a tarantula. Well, it was better than getting killed by a pesco murderer. Good, said Mrs. Common Levin. I thought that you'd make you happy. I, I thought that would make you happy. The important thing, though, is that you're safe. She patted my hand again. I waited to hear what she really thought. I heard nothing. What was going on here? And then it hit me. Getting a shock a second time must have knocked out my mind reading powers. Was this possible? I had a ch to check it out. That think of a number number between one and ten. Quick. Okay, got it. He said he turned to Mrs. Crumb and Mrs. Common Lever. Watch this. He said, Zack can read minds. It's amazing. You're not serious, said Mrs. Crump. I'm absolutely serious, said my dad. Watch. The number you're thinking of is five, I said. No, said my dad. He looked at me and frowned in puzzlement. He usually gets it on the first guess, said my dad. The number you're thinking of is ten. No, said my dad. He looked a little embarrassed. The number you're thinking of is three? No, said my dad. What? No, seven? No. Zach, what's going on? Six? No, eight? No, Zach, what's happening here? Then I see my powers are gone, I said. You should have seen him yesterday, said my dad. Mrs. Crump and Mrs. Common Levin just nodded. And even though I couldn't pick up their thoughts, I'm pretty sure they saw my dad and I were crazy. So I'm not a mind reader anymore. And I don't really miss it. Not that much anyway. Mind reading complicates your life too much. Now, I just have to believe that people really mean what they say. And since I can't pick up answers from Spencer Sharp's mind anymore, I guess I have to really study for the English test next week. The end of 
chapter 5 to chapter 9.